Robert Kaplan once said, Grand strategy is about marrying ends to means, about doing what you can, consistent with the nation's capabilities and resources. Keep this in mind as we discuss today what is at the core of the dispute, the border dispute that is, between China and India. My name is Dr. David Wallalu. And my name is Dr. Ross Stewart. And you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. Again, thank you for your comments. Most thoughtful and so encouraging. Thank you so much. And we also wanted to thank our Patreon members for their support and for you. If you like our videos and you want to support us and demonstrate your support, consider joining our Patreon membership. We thank all of you for your support. China and India the longest disputed border in the world. What is it, 2,400 miles? Of the Himalayan. Himalayas. Indeed, indeed, Ross. And what we've seen is periods of peace, now increased tensions and even violence and death at the border. What do you make yeah, of all this? That's correct. As a matter of fact, uh, some, uh, in, in some uh, 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 writings uh, that I've, uh, or readings rather, that I came across, they are assessing this to be between the two great superpowers. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. Let's hold on a sec. Let's take a step back. Right. India is not a superpower. You know. By far, it's not a superpower when you compare it to Russia, uh, China, uh, China, or the United yeah. States. It just yeah. isn't. Yeah. And, and even China, <laughs> you won't call it a superpower. The, rise, the reason because because China right now is a rising superpower. Correct. It didn't reach that status yet, and it will. That's for sure. But in the case of India, uh, India is an emerging economy, you know. Uh, you, so just to uh, put that to rest as far as when some call in India as a superpower, that's nonsense. So well, we, ta we take a look at the development of the long-term plan for India's military. Mm -hmm. Spotty, underfunded, kind of a mishmash. That's true. When you compare it just to Pakistan, it's arch enemy. So, oh, yeah. Well, Pakistan spends about 4.2, if I'm not mistaken, percent. Uh, India spends about 2.1 or 2.2. So, so, but, uh, so the issue with China and, 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 uh, or the tensions between China and India over the borders, uh, those are not new. You know? If we are to go back into the history of how it's all started, back in the 40s, when, when uh, uh, Mao... Yeah. at the time, uh, sort of wanted to move China forward. It was during the same decade with, when India gained independence from the UK. So they did have a good relationship. There seemed to be a real friendship, whether it was Asia for Asians and Asia becoming a, a, uh, an economic powerhouse. It, exactly. Where things turned a little bit sour, if, you may, if I may use the term, was when China took over Tibet. Well, the, there are those arguments that it was part of its territory over, and they took over there. So, but what came to the forefront was the war between the two in I think 1962, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. You know when thousands of soldiers from both ends were, were dead. killed. Yeah. yeah. So, but after that, they kind of resumed some sort of talks. So, but it was always the mistrust that has loomed large over the relationship at that time. What we have is no clear boundaries. Any number of attempts to set boundaries, they didn't hold. That's correct. And the reason for that mistrust also was because uh, Dalai Lama uh, uh, sought refuge in India. So China was thinking in terms of India was conspiring with the US and UK to plan his escape from the region. So that was always uh, this mistrust on part of the Chinese towards the Indians, you know, or India, that is. So, 
uh, things moved forward till about 19, uh, I mean, in, in around 1975, they had, I think, some uh, tensions over there. But it was a treaty signed between India and China that no live fire will be used on the border because it's, there is no demarcation on it. Right. It's, it's a lot of land, if you will. Uh, I mean, who claims what? And that's where the challenge is, especially when uh, 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 China uh, built some roads into what they call the chicken neck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it is of a strategic location, that, lo that, that one, because in case is of war. A, in case of war, is it also part of the Belt and Road Initiative? Uh, th that can be used for that, yes, mm -hmm. you know. And this is one of the issues India is having a hard time with. India is not subscribing to China's BRI, doesn't believe in it, doesn't agree with it, doesn't, well, who cares whether <laughs> India agrees or not, you know. It's to their detriment anyway, because they could have benefit from, I mean, the trade between India and China is no small. No, it, it's matter of fact, it's substantial and important to the Indian economy. And you will think Indian leaders, political that is, uh, they're no different than any other government with the corruption that exists in India. Right. You will think they will sort of see the strategic interest for them economically in moving forward with China. It's exactly what Pakistan is doing. So to China, to India, that's creating some sort of resentments that now China is closer with Pakistan. Well, what we've seen, as a matter of fact, in one of our earlier shows, substantial uh, infrastructure investment from China in Pakistan. That is correct. And Gwadar. Especially in the Gwadar port. And that is rubbing in the other room <laughs> because they <laughs> are feeling it. Well, because in that area, because it's going to be under the protection of the Chinese. So, Which means there's probably Chinese military there to protect the Exactly. Port. So when India says they're going to, you know, challenge China militarily, whatever, that just saber rattling because, I mean, pragmatically speaking, India stands no chance, nuclear or not. Right. Because they just stand no chance against China. Well, we saw 50,000 troops move, move there, then sort of not really move there. Yeah, gradually, going back because China is not backing down. And China strike me as will be pragmatic in not initiating a military conflict with India. Because here is the strategic reason to why China would not do that. I don't see China doing that. Because if they push India to the corner, India will go all the way in the arms of the United States. They're not as of today. Yes, there are some sort of a relationship with the United States, but it's not like an ally, if you will. Right. What, what you need to know, and our viewers <laughs> need to know, is that India is being used. I was just going to ask, has India come under the influence of the United States to agitate and aggravate China? Yeah, is acting as the geopolitical wild card in the region to sort of act as a counterbalance to China's expansion. Because the argument within India uh, uh, states that they don't want China as the only hegemon in Asia. Well, who else has that kind of economy? <laughs> I mean, common sense. Right. You know, and that tells me, and I speak for myself here, that tells me right there, China, uh, India is being used to pursue certain uh, uh, posturing against China. Uh, it's like being a member of the Quad. Oh, yeah. How can you, uh, if I were to advise the Indian government, wouldn't it be wise to use those resources into improving your domestic economy versus allocating funds for the Quads that you have to move your military elsewhere in support of the Quad? And who else in the Quad? Australia and Japan. Well, we all know what's going on with Australia's yeah. economy. And we all know what Japan is right now. <laughs> you know, uh, gone the 80s when the J Japanese economy was where it needs to be. What we see is dramatic decline in the Japanese economy. Oh, big time. Big, big time. time. And this is what I believe also, like if you consider, for example, what South Korea just did, what Pakistan just did with the U.S. requests for certain things, they're turning the U.S. down. Flat out, no. Yeah, yeah because they are seeing the changes coming out of Asia. 
The thing that we have a hard time with in the West is that the global, emer the global economy that is, its source is going to be Asia, not Europe, not the United States. And that's a fact. We take a look at all the issues that India is facing. Yeah. Uh, what would you say that priority in terms of paying attention is? Well, there will be, let's let just start with the poverty first. Yeah. You know, there is a massive swing in poverty in India. Let, let's figure out, first of all, how, you know, they got different ethnicities, how you bring people from a poverty. That's, that's, that's one of the things. Uh, second has to do with infrastructure. There are no infrastructure in India. Uh, I mean, there are basic stuff. I'm not saying, and, and by the way, we are not degrading India here At by all. no means. We'd like to tell that we'd like to tell you what we're seeing, we're not judging. No, 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 no. I have great respect for India as a country, Indian individuals. I have Indian friends. By no means, it's just we are pointing what is factual. So, <clears throat> so you have to improve your infrastructure. I mean, mind you, that India was about to uh, uh, deploy the 5G technology. From, can you imagine how that will? Have oh improved? man! And yet, because of pressure from the United States, they kind of... Uh, so infrastructure uh, raised the poverty, uh, people from poverty. What and, about corruption? Well, they do have corruption. Well, uh, every government I've every, heard of does. But. It's just massive in India. So the, and what a, I've been paying attention for some time about the massive bureaucracy. It is indeed because of ethnicities, you know. Oh, yeah. Then you add to all this, the tensions that's going on, well, not going on right now, but that has always been in the Jammu and Kashmir area. Oh, that's or, big or time. Or autonomous that region, really big. rather. Yes, it is a big one. There are those who are saying that, you know, that's an Indian stuff, which, historically speaking, that doesn't bode well <laughs> with the reality based on what I know and the individuals that I've been talking to from that part of the world. So, uh, if India can at least uh, figure out a way with Pakistan how to resolve the Kashmir Jammu region, uh, make it autonomous, I don't know. It's their issue, they need to figure it out. Uh, but also, the, that infrastructure, I keep going back to the infrastructure because the problem with, with the challenge, I should say, not the problem, but the challenge India has, India has some talents. Oh, they got a lot of talented people there. But, Great universities, for example. Yeah, but when they come to the United States, they're not going back. They bring in their entire families here, yeah. and, and that's a drain of brain power in India. So if India can figure out a way of how to be, uh, you know, take advantage of its own uh, brain power within it, the country, that would be very, very useful. I do know they did one thing good a couple of years ago, especially with uh, when Bill Gates used them as a, a lab test for the stuff that he was doing there. So I, I applaud India for taking stand and kicked out Bill Gates out of the country. He can't go back anymore. Why? <laughs> well, because you start to that. see uh, paralyzed children and all that stuff. Wrong. Oh, the inoculations yeah, the inocula and so on. Yes, yeah. So I admire India for taking a stand on that. But currently the challenges that going on in the region with now Taliban taking over Afghanistan. The U.S. withdrawing in a defeat, which doesn't send right. a good message. With Pakistan improving its relationship with China, with ASEAN country strengthening the relationship economically that is with China. So it behooves India to take a step back and think, what's good for me economically and strategically, rather than just following blindly what the West is saying and so forth. What do you think the likelihood of any real of war between China and India is? I don't see that happening, Ross, because uh, it will be very devastating for both. Uh, uh, China will have the upper hand. I mean, let's not make... Uh, it's, it's a reality, it's a fact. Uh, but I just don't see uh, uh, the rationale for a hot war between India and China. China wouldn't want to go that route. Uh, India also wouldn't want to go that route because that will take India's uh, eye from the key issues on a border and all that, and they are, they are not going to risk that. And this is why the argument I make, and this is my personal opinion, I am a believer that India will not be able to fight two fronts. 
Pakistan would, would you think Pakistan would jump on this if uh, there was a war between China and India? Uh, jump away, like take advantage of it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's unlikely they'll do that because uh, Pakistan, all Pakistan needs to do is just take a step back and watch. <laughs> Because, correct, correct. Right, because, they don't have to get involved. Yeah, because if China gets involved in a hot war with India, you know, that's not going to bode well for India. And, and China, uh, Pakistan doesn't need to be involved. Do you see the U.S. supporting India in anything? Uh, like I don't think so. Uh, you know, there is a difference between a lip service and action. What you say versus what you do. There are two different things. It's because also the United States understands if they get involved in yet another conflict, no. And this one is different. That's why I don't, I don't see any hot war, uh, you know. It behooves China to think strategically, and I think they are, by, by, by realizing there is no need to aggravate the situation. You know? And that's a smart move. That doesn't mean they are backing down. They're not. Oh, well, they certainly don't seem to be. No, it's the idea of thinking strategically here. Because they don't want to push India all the way to the corner. For our viewers, what would you say the real takeaway here is? Well, it's just for us, we don't need to be sucked into this conflict. If India wants to take on China, more power to them. <laughs> we shouldn't be getting involved in all this because you look just with Afghanistan and you ask the question, what have we gained after 20 years and over $2 trillion of waste? Your money, taxpayers' money. So... Uh, and a conflict between two nuclear countries, it's not going to bode well. The bottom line is let's, let's hope that does not occur, that, that smarter, more reasoned heads take control here and end this conflict. Exactly. They can work out the borders, issues, and so forth. But again, there are no signs on that open land, so it's, they're going to have to figure that out. And only the two of them can do it. We can't come in and dictate to them. Uh, who are we to dictate to them anyway? Well, the United States has pretty well proven itself to be a non-performer when no. it comes to dictating to other people in 2021. That's correct. Things have changed. Things have changed. changed. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other videos. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay informed. Till next time. Bye-bye.